domestication of salmon has presented animal husbandry with one of its greatest challenges ever. In a few short decades, salmon farming has developed into a major industry. It was necessary for this new industry to acquire technical knowledge and experience. As with other intensive animal husbandry practices, appearance of infectious disease and its consequences in salmon was inevitable. Through research and accumulated experience, fish farmers continue to develop greater knowledge and understanding of their profession. Significant progress has also been made in combating disease. Infectious disease in fish can account for serious economic losses to the fish farmer. Vaccination is one of the most effective tools in reducing the impact of disease and protecting a producer's bottom line. Effective vaccines reduce the need for antibiotics, helping to minimize the danger of creating bacterial antibiotic resistance or causing a negative environmental impact. Vaccines can be administered orally, by immersion, or by injection. Injection vaccination provides the greatest protection against disease, but it is also the most labor-intensive. Great care must be taken to limit handling losses when performing injection vaccination. This film's objective is to increase prospective vaccinators' knowledge of injection vaccination. Fish demonstrate both nonspecific and specific defense mechanisms against disease. Nonspecific mechanisms respond to a variety of infectious agents. Substances in the intestine and mucous membranes of the skin and gills both provide protection against infection. White blood cells produced in the kidney protect the fish like soldiers, triggering the specific or learned defense mechanism. Their response is learned through exposure to naturally occurring infection or via vaccination. This response, or immune reaction, occurs mainly in the spleen. Vaccination exposes these soldiers to kill bacteria. The soldiers examine and memorize the surface structure of the bacteria. The bacterial surface can be compared to the distinguishing uniform of an enemy. Those soldiers that recognize the enemy's uniform multiply, producing appropriate defense weapons. This multiplying battalion of soldiers bearing proper defense weapons represents specific protective immunity. Vaccination arms the defense system and prepares it for an attack by living bacteria bearing this uniform. Several factors influence the success of vaccination. The relative size of fish at vaccination can affect the outcome. When vaccinating, the average weight should be greater than 10 grams. Refrain from vaccination during smoltification. Stress caused by handling can adversely affect smoltification, perhaps ultimately impairing the fish's immune response. Therefore, schedule vaccination a minimum of two months prior to seawater entry. After exposure to vaccine, the defense system needs time to build protective immunity. Duration of protection varies with different vaccines. Temperature seems to have little influence on protection levels. But handling fish when temperatures fall in the zero centigrade range or during periods of rapid temperature fluctuation should be avoided. Proper timing for vaccination is a function of smoltification, the vaccine's duration of protection, and temperature conditions in the hatchery. A booster effect can extend the duration of protection if administered before the first vaccination has had time to wear off. When stressed, fish excrete hormones that can impair the immune response. Handle the fish with care and maintain a peaceful and stable environment prior to and following vaccination. Certain nutrients, such as vitamin C, enhance the immune defense system. Quality feed with a high nutritional value is critical. If a disease lies dormant in the hatchery, Vaccination may provoke an outbreak with uncertain consequences. Some medications may have a negative effect on the immune defense system. Vaccination is no guarantee against disease. The defense system of a fish can be thought of in terms of a dike. 
waves represent an infection or disease. A strong dike is constructed through breeding, high quality feed, and a good environment. The waves may still splash over and cause disease. Vaccination secures further against disease, but disease can still occur if a healthy environment is not maintained, even if the fish has been vaccinated. When injecting vaccines, fish must be anesthetized. The vaccine is injected into the peritoneal cavity. Careful handling, suitable equipment, proper vaccination technique, and good hygiene are imperative. The vaccination process consists of dip netting, anesthetizing, the vaccination table, injection, and recovery. Vaccines contain killed bacteria and should be stored in a cold place. Do not freeze the vaccine. Shake the vaccine well before using. Injection vaccines are sterile packed. The tubes should be attached under hygienic conditions. Open packages should never be stored and reused. Some vaccines are viscous in nature when cold and should be warmed to room temperature prior to use. To facilitate application, the vaccine may be placed under your clothes and the tube threaded out a sleeve. An automatic syringe is used to administer a predetermined amount of vaccine to each fish. The dosage varies for different types of vaccine. Notice the guards each side of the needle. They help protect vaccinators from accidental self-injection. The fish must be starved for 48 hours prior to vaccination to empty their intestines. Examine fish of various sizes one last time to make sure that the intestine has emptied. The thickness of the abdominal cavity determines the length of the needle to be used. The entire diagonally cut point should be inserted just deep enough to penetrate the body wall by about one millimeter. Mix appropriate anesthesia in water according to recommended dosage. Several kinds of anesthetic may be used. MS-222 and benzocaine are common choices. The temperature of the anesthetic solution should be about the same as that of the rearing water. Avoid netting too many fish at a time. The fish need an adequate amount of space in order to be properly anesthetized. They must be carefully monitored to determine if the dosage of the anesthetic requires adjustment. Too weak a solution delays sedation and prolongs the wake-up process. Pay careful attention. Within one minute, the fish should become less active and begin to swim on their sides. The fish consume oxygen. Slime and foam will form in the bath. For this reason, it is vital that the solution be frequently changed. As soon as the fish are sedated, lift them onto the vaccination table. The vaccination table surface should be smooth and free of sharp edges which may injure the fish. It is important to maintain a steady flow and even pace during the anesthetization and the vaccination process. Do not anesthetize more fish than the vaccination team is capable of vaccinating. A good working environment, relaxed speed, and steady flow of anesthetized fish is critical to the safety of both the fish and the vaccinators. The fish should be injected in the midline at least one pelvic fin's length forward of the base of the pelvic fins. The vaccine is injected in front of the fin cartilage. The spleen and pyloric cica are shown here. On this fish, the needle hit the cartilage area not all of the vaccine reached the peritoneal cavity, resulting in infection. Dull needles can unnecessarily damage the fish and cause infection. Therefore, needles should be changed regularly. As soon as possible, the fish should be immersed in clean water to begin recovery. Water may also be used on the vaccination table itself. The water also functions as a gentle means of transport. If the anesthesia is administered correctly, the recovery should occur rapidly. Pay careful attention and make sure that the fish do not pile up in the recovery tank. 
Begin with a trial vaccination of a few hundred fish. Then take a break and see how the fish are doing after an hour or so before continuing. All data from the vaccination should be recorded in a journal for future reference. At the end of the day, the syringe should be washed and sterilized. First, the instrument is dismantled and washed in hot water to remove any vaccine residue. All the parts should then be thoroughly rinsed and reassembled. Both the syringe and the tube should be sterilized in boiling water for 30 minutes. Injection may also be done automatically, and several brands of injectors are available. The procedures for automatic vaccination mirrors that of manual vaccination up to the point where the fish are positioned for injection. The fish are fed into the machine by hand. The machine must handle the fish gently. It is important that each fish be vaccinated in the proper location. The penetration depth of the needle is adjusted in advance. Some machines automatically count and sort the fish. One of the most important advantages of an automatic vaccination is that it eliminates the danger of self-injection. However, the equipment must be carefully washed to assure proper and consistent operation. Advantages to injection vaccination over other methods include Injection vaccination offers the highest available disease protection, particularly against furunculosis. Every fish receives the recommended dosage. It is the most cost-effective option currently available. However, the method is labor-intensive. Anesthesia must be used and the amount of handling required is greater. Injection vaccination may lead to temporary appetite loss and stagnation of growth. However, it is uncertain how great an impact this has on the weight of the fish at slaughter due to compensatory growth. In addition, an improvement in resistance to disease results in higher quantities of fish at harvest. To improve the vaccine's effectiveness, injectable furunculosis vaccines contain adjuvants. The adjuvant, an oil substance, mineral salt, or glucan, may cause irritation in the abdominal cavity, resulting in adhesions or pigmentation. The needle penetrates the skin and abdominal membrane before entering the peritoneal cavity. If hygienic measures are not observed, the risk of infection rises. There is also the risk of self-injection when performing manual injection vaccination. In recent years, seawater vaccination has become more common, especially in cases where vaccines with a relatively short duration of protection have been used earlier. For the producer, fish loss at this stage of the production cycle is very costly. The vaccination procedure includes crowding, dip netting, anesthetizing, Vaccination table with water, injection, grading, and recovery. Vaccinating fish in the sea requires careful attention and precision. Poor handling may result in high mortality. The most important point to bear in mind is to handle the fish very carefully to protect them from potential hazards. Seawater vaccination does not require equipment as extensive as that shown here. As long as you follow the same basic principles, use a sufficient amount of water, and gently handle the fish throughout the entire procedure. Plan carefully and do not rush.
The fish are starved for about a week before vaccination in the sea. The fish are crowded to expedite collection. It is critical that the fish be given ample space in the net and that they are not placed in water that is too shallow. Overcrowding will stress the fish and increase the risk of injury and scale loss. Use a net that is free from knots. Do not crowd more fish than can be properly handled in one and a half to two hours. The fish should be kept as calm as possible. The anesthetic solution is prepared in advance, taking into consideration the same principles discussed for the hatchery vaccination. It is critical that the net used be of suitable design. Remember to use a proportionately sufficient ratio of water to fish in the net. Release the fish together with the water. The fish should slide over a smooth drain gate and directly into a tank containing anesthesia. The fish should be fully anesthetized for about one minute. As soon as the fish become motionless, they are brought gently to the vaccination table. There should be a sufficient amount of clean rearing water on the vaccination table to start the recovery process. The fish are carried forward by the current of the water. The table edges are rounded and its surface is smooth. The automatic syringe is the same as that employed in the hatchery vaccination, but the needle length and the wing safety catch must be adjusted to the size of the fish. A large fish should be injected in the midline about one and a half to two pelvic fins length forward of the base of the pelvic fins. The fish is injected in this area. The needle must penetrate the body wall in front of the fin cartilage. Here, the vaccine has been replaced with a blue liquid. The needle point should penetrate a minimum of two to three millimeters inside the body wall. If injected in the cartilage area, the needle becomes too short. This results in vaccine remaining in the tissue, causing boils, scars, and pigmentation. Do not rush when injecting. Be sure that all the vaccine gets into the peritoneal cavity. Handle the fish gently. The penetration depth will shorten when the scales collect on the needle. Clean it regularly. The fish are carried forward by the water stream to be hand graded according to size. Make sure that tubing and corners do not have sharp edges. The fish should show immediate signs of recovery in the net pen and must not be left to lay and pile up on the bottom. A shallow recovery net may be used, but it is preferable to allow the fish to wake up in open water. If you discover extensive scale loss in the vaccinated fish, stop vaccination immediately. Mortality caused by scale loss may not occur until about a week after vaccination. If the seawater vaccination is carried out correctly without any complications, mortality should not exceed one half percent. However, reduced appetite can be expected for two to four weeks, and in some instances longer. If the same equipment is used on several farms, proper cleaning and disinfection procedures should be carried out. Many factors must be taken into account when contemplating seawater vaccination. The likelihood of disease, along with the accompanying costs and disadvantages, must be weighed against the cost and risks associated with vaccinating in the sea. The decision should be made in consultation with a veterinarian or fish health professional who is familiar with local conditions. A comparison between two hatcheries, one vaccinated, the other not, may yield the following results. 100,000 unvaccinated smolt are challenged with disease, resulting in 30% mortality. Assuming an average weight of 3 kilos at harvest, the total production will amount to 210 tons. Using the same number of vaccinated smolt and a relative protection of 95%, 
the mortality when exposed to the same disease challenge will be 5%. With an average weight of 3 kilos, this results in 295.5 tons of fish produced. In this example, the vaccination resulted in an increase of 85.5 tons at harvest. This production increase directly benefits the food fish producer. Therefore, food fish and smolt producers should determine a vaccination strategy together in consultation with the veterinarian or other fish health professional, taking into account vaccination method, optimum timing, and selection of vaccine based on a disease risk and anticipated production. Manual injection carries the risk of accidental self-injection. Different people react differently to the vaccine. The most important thing is that you have a local reaction around the same place you stuck it. That you get a little bit of a hand, maybe, that you get a little bit of a knut. Uh, rødt og litt smertefullt å ta på. Det er den vanligste reaksjonen som du kan se hvis du risper deg med, med spisen. Uh, hvis det er litt mer alvorlig, så vil denne reaksjonen bre seg til hele handen, eventuelt oppover underarmen et stykke. Du kan få en sånn rød stripe, det vi kaller for, som kalles blodforgiftning, sant? som da egentlig er en sånn lymfeårebetegnelse. Og du kan få hevelse i lymfekjertene opp i, opp i, i armhula her. Så den alvorligste reaksjonen, den som vi da kaller et, et anafylaktisk sjokk, den er det som egentlig starter endelig at blodtrykket i kroppen dett. Så du får et blodtrykksfall, og det kompenserer kroppen med at du får pulsøkning, og det oppleves som hjerte, hjertebank. Samtidig så vil du få en reaksjon fra åndedrettsorganet, folk føler lufthunger, tungpust, Kvalme er veldig typisk. Alle de pasientene vi har sett har egentlig startet med at de føler seg veldig kvalm og uvel. Og du kan få ulike reaksjoner da fra, fra mage- og tarmsystemet. Behandlingen for sånt, den, den, det er en ting som er overordnet det, og det er at det skal skje raskt. Og den, da bør ha i nærheten det sprøyte med adrenalin. Adrenalin er effektiv motgift som gitt tidsnok og i tilstrekkelig mengde vil redde liv hvis det er det det står. Alt det andre er for så vidt uvesentlig. Sett adrenalin, eventuelt gjenta det om 20 minutter, en halv timmes tid, hvis den første dosen på en halv til en milliliter ikke var nok, og så får personen til dagtid på sykehuset. Disease is a key determining factor in the viability of an aquaculture operation. Vaccination provides a financial cornerstone for producers. <laughs> 